So in this video, I'm just going to show the process of how I'm soldering the chips that we got from the MPW2 tape out onto these uh, PCBs. So we end up with something like this. And then we put that into the test jig. We characterize the problems that we've got with the GPIOs. And then we can go through each of the designs that taped out on the zero to ASIC course MPW2 tape out and hopefully get some signs of life from them. And we've seen some good results from some of them, but I've only got 20 or 30 chips and today I've soldered up another 10. So the first thing we've got to do is to clean up these boards and I'm using isopropyl alcohol. You want to use something that's not going to get little fibers and threads on the board because that can be uh, make things difficult. And then I'm using a thick flux. I'm actually putting on too much here. I realized afterwards the chips were kind of floating around a bit too much. So I removed some of the excess with a cotton bud and I'll show you the, the kind of result. So this is about how much flux I've got on there. And then we take the MPW2 chips. Let's just get a nice little shot here of them. Hmm, pretty. And then using the microscope, get them in kind of roughly the right place. For the orientation, they don't have a pin marker, um, but thanks to Sylvain Minot, we've got this uh, picture that shows this kind of splits in the top right hand corner. And then I can just flip it over, make sure it's got covered in flux, put it onto the hot plate. I've got mine set to about 230. We leave it on there for maybe 20 seconds to really heat up nicely. And then I come in from the top with a hot air gun set to around 300 degrees and that just finishes off the final melting. And we'll take a zoom in here. You get a kind of bit of bubbling and the chip moving around a bit. And what you're aiming to do is just very, very gently with the tweezers kind of keep it centered if it kind of shunts off to one side. And then when the solder balls have all melted, you'll get the surface tension holding it into place and you can kind of boop it on the side and it should return. So we'll take a closer look at that. So just booping it. And you see it snap back to its position. Then we take that off and plug it into the test jig that characterizes the GPIOs. So that's about it. I just wanted to put this together to show you my process. I think it would be better if I used a stencil and some solder paste, but I'm trying to do this in a way that is really quick and simple for me because I've got, I've gone done 40 chips so far and I, I'm trying to keep my process short and sweet. So hope that helps you in soldering up your own PCBs. Uh, let me know in the comments.